Hey guys, make sure to check out the Burt and Leanne Bundle, the best of both worlds bundle at BurtBurtBurt.com for $40 today. That's right. Check out the best of both worlds bundle with Burt and Leanne stuff starting today, $40 a bundle. (laughs) I look at you as like, you're like a Corvette engine in a UPS truck. <laughs> there's a lot of vroom vroom, but when the tires hit the concrete, there's not a lot of squealing. Las Vegas, I am headed to Resorts World Theater, September 27th and 28th. Two shows only. Get your tickets at BurtBurtBurt.com. Can I tell you what I love about your special? What? Everyone has to go watch this special. It's on YouTube. It's called You Know Me. It's shot in Rogan's Club in Austin. It's a beautiful fucking venue. It's beautifully shot, beautifully directed, and it is honestly masterful. Dude, your, thank your, you so your, much. Your first joke, your first joke is, I'm not going to I'm not gonna take away. It's about, uh, tw- I'm just going to broad stroke it. We can edit every whatever you want out. I'm just imploring people to go watch what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's about 23 and me, and you're Irish, and you say, is anyone else Irish? And a guy on the... <laughs> thing raises his hand and your interaction with him and this is why it's brilliant your pacing your timing and your words are exact and hysterical <laughs> and it, and it's not it's not it never went into a gluttonous like so what do you do uh-huh. it, it, turned, right. it was it was what i believe crowd work should be there's this like really you know it's like what, what you know why people love kill tony why? Because they're kind of doing crowd work to on stage. Yeah. And they're masters at it. Right, right. They're masters at it. But you're, I, I mean, Greg, I honestly, I only watch that like three or four times. Because in within that, ma- it's not that you just said a funny line back to the guy. Within that moment, you crafted a joke and told it back to this one guy for the whole room <laughs> for the special. And it never pulls you out where you... You go like, well, I don't give a fuck. I'm not there. It, uh-huh. it wasn't about that. It was so fucking good in the smallest part, in the yeah. smallest minutia of it. I was like, God damn it, man. More comics need to watch that moment and go do crowd work. But man, write your bits. Hey, write your fucking hey. bits. Hey, well, thanks, man. That's all really flattering to hear. And, you know, I respect your opinion a lot. And, you know, and I think it's like, I, I went to acting school for two years and I studied a thing called the, you ever do the Meisner technique? Where you listen and answer. I was thinking of Kaggles, but keep going. (laughs) No, Kaggles is why you're sitting like that right now. No, what's you listen and answer? You listen and answer. (laughs) So I would say to you, uh, you have a purple hat. And you would go, I have a purple hat. And I would say, you have a purple hat. And you say, yeah, I have a purple hat. And I'd be like, and you just listen to the other person. I did this for two fucking years. All you do is put all of your attention on them. You get out of your head and all you do is naturally react to their tone. You're looking in their eyes. You're feeling their energy because that's where Brando started, James Dean, Paul Newman. They all started in the same school I went to. Yeah. And it was that new school of acting, which was about finding the moment and being so attentive to the other person that your natural voice has to come out because you're not thinking about it. You're letting it just come out. Yeah. And so I feel like that trained me for crowd work. I put all of my attention on them. I never think about, well, I'm going to do this pre-written bit and make it look like crowd work. That was the other thing is like I watched, uh, I watched, I was one of the things I learned very early is you never make fun of the guy in the crowd because then all of a sudden they're not on your team. Yeah. So if like if someone's got a weird laugh, you don't go like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right, right. I did that. <laughs> Uh, the mistakes you make in crowd work for yeah. are the most brilliant. I mean, really just fucking horrific. Yeah. I, I mean, once had a guy, <laughs> I was at Revere in Boston. It's a, it's a little Italian town. It's, it's in the city of Boston basically. Yeah. And, uh, this was like 1991 and I was new at crowd work and this Italian guy was in the front and I was fucking with him about his pleather jacket and then I was hold. I asked him a question. I love using the mic on the person because then you don't have to repeat what they said. Yeah. I, if they're in the front row, I love to just Donahue them, put it yeah. right in their face. And so this guy grabs the mic from me and just starts shitting on me because in Boston, 
good chance they're funnier than you are if they're in the audience. <laughs> and this guy started roasting me. And he's Italian, and the whole crowd's Italian, so it's like he's their leader. Yeah. And I was like, don't ever let them get near the microphone Ooh, again. never give them the mic. Yeah. I said, I, I mean, I have such epic fails in crowd work. Such epic fails. Yeah. Such, I have one, one's probably the worst was, and this is all the learning. This is what I wish these comics would post, is all these fails, because those are the funnest ones to tell. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Tom comes up, he goes on before me, we're in Brea, and he goes, guy in the second row, Sunglass, sunglasses on, he's acting blind, he's not blind. <laughs> I was like, really? He goes, fucking light him up. I was like, done. <laughs> so I start lighting the guy up, and I, I start going like, hey, man, you're, uh, I'm over here. Like I'm a, And he goes, I'm blind. And I go, are you? And he was like, yeah, I am. And I go, really? And his, all his friends are laughing. Yeah. And I go, okay. I go, hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, how hard is it to clear a room before you jerk off? He's like, what? I said, do you have roommates? He goes, yeah. I said, you just jerk off and you just hope no one's in the room? And he goes, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I said, wait, you never jerked off? He goes, I don't know, man. I don't know. And I and Tom's like fucking dying. He's like, get him. And I'm like, <clears throat> I go, hey, how do you uh how do you how do you know when you're done shitting? And he was like, huh? I said, well, you gotta oh, look no, at the toilet paper. Didn't say that. You gotta look at the toilet paper. How do you know you're done shitting? You just push it against the wall and see if it sticks. And he goes, I don't know, man. I don't know. And I go, well, guess what? I'm not falling for this shit. All those boys are dying laughing. I go, I know you're not blind. Take the fucking sunglasses off. And he gets up. He gets up and he starts to move. And it is very clear he's blind. He's knocking over tables. He can't find anything. The girls in the party grab him. They grab his arms and he's like, fuck you. And I'm like, oh, God, I think he's fucking blind. And he walks out and they escort him out. And his boys are laughing. And I go, wait, is he really blind? And they're like, he just got blind last week. Oh. And I was like, motherfucker. Oh. And they're like, we brought him here to cheer you, That's cheer him amazing. up. That's amazing. And I was like, mother. And Tom's like, dude, he's definitely fucking blind in the back. I'm like, shut up, Tom. Oh, that's brutal. Oh. That's like saying to a woman, when are you due? But she just has the fatness from an abortion she had the week before. She hasn't lost that baby fat yet. I did that at the Boston Comedy Club. Barking at the Boston Comedy Club. Puerto Rican couple walks up. And they're so like, chances are she's pregnant. <laughs> she, goes, she goes, is it good in there? And I go, yeah, but you probably shouldn't be in there. She was like, why? I go, they're smoking. She goes, what's that mean? I go, well, you're pregnant. And her Puerto Rican boyfriend, it was like a slam dunk contest. He goes, oh, and starts dancing on into the street. And this woman Fucking lost it. <laughs> lost it on me. I was like, no, I'm so sorry. I thought you were pregnant. Well, that's the thing about Puerto Rican women. You don't have to wear the crop top. You know? Go with something blousey. If someone's going to possibly mistake you for pregnant, go for oh. go for a hoodie. Oh. Have you seen the comic who has the joke that he goes, th- this is one of the best jokes I've ever seen. He goes, uh... I'm going to tell a joke that's exactly 60 seconds long. Have you seen this? No. Ryan Goodcase. Here, put the headsets on. This is, I want to play this kid's joke. I'm going to demonstrate how good my timing is with this next joke. It's going to be exactly 60 seconds long. Uh, I need somebody's help. Sir, in the hoodie, the Nike hoodie, do you mind helping me with this? What I want you to do is count backwards in your head from 60 to zero. And when I point at you, yell out what number you're on. Does that make sense? Go ahead and start. So I was talking to my dad recently, and my dad's a pretty old guy. He was born in, like, 1956. So I don't know how old that makes him, but it's sure older than... 48. Right, guys? So anyways, (laughs) he's like a rough-and-tumble guy, and I was trying to brag to him one day. I don't know how it comes up, but he goes, Ryan, how many women did you sleep with in college? And I was like, I don't know, probably, like... 40. Which is a total lie. (laughs) a total lie like if i was being honest with him and i counted all the women i've ever slept with throughout my entire life the number would probably be closer to i did not point yet
And you got to see him. He looks like yeah. the nerdiest. There you go. Hey, right in the back of the house. Yeah. That's, That's it, man. Great. There's so many people. That's great. Uh, so many people I've worked with that I go that are just like, just masters at it. I think that's why people responded so much to the to the roast. Yeah, that you're watching people do the wildly hardest shit, which is fucking craft a, a, a thing where you're like, you know, even Gronk said, "Me know that not real money." Mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> it's just so great. It's what I love about your special is that honestly, the jokes are brilliant. What are you wearing? That's a, such a fucking great. <laughs> It's such a great little, f but every time, every time you need to, you're never married to the material. You never feel like you're you're married to it. It feels like an honest reflection of what a night at stand up comedy is, and especially because mm -hmm. it's done at Joe's show, yeah. Joe's room. That room's so good. It's so good, and those and and the thing about the Austin crowds is because I I'm not I'm not right wing, and but and everybody's like, oh that room, it's all like you know Republican. It's like, nobody gives a shit in Austin. Yeah. The whole point of Austin is that you can say whatever you want, you know? Yeah. And that doesn't mean saying whatever you want that's edgy and dark and right wing. It means like I did an anti-gun bit and they were fucking into it. Yeah. As long as the jokes are good. And I think that that room is a real test of that, of like, of like, all right, let's go. It's what comedy used to be. It used to be, let me go for this guy's ride. Kinnison. I don't have to agree with the shit he's saying, yeah. but I'm going to just explore... You know, uh, Bill Hicks. I'm not going to agree with what he's saying, but like, here's an interesting ride. Here, George Carlin, you know? And I think now there's such a following aspect to comedy. Like, some comedians have their cult that follows them. And, uh, you know, like, you see it at, like, some of the alt rooms and stuff. There's sort of like this uh, push all the buttons to signify that you're, you know, with me. Yeah. And and it's and it's not even funny. Mm -mm. But um but Rogan's Club I feel like you can you can let it out in any direction and it works. I think so too. I think there are probably people that are misusing that club in their own head where they think, "Oh, I can say anything I want, be as alt right as I want." That's not the point of it. The point of it is I'm I'm never I've never talked politics on stage, but right. I can say wild shit about my wife. Right. And they'll go with me. Yeah. They'll be like, okay, I know. I, I trust him. Yes. And that's the, the the point of that. That club's beautiful, man. I love that. It's a beautiful setup. I didn't have to do much to dress this. I just put some lights up on the stage. We brought in a, a ton of cameras and, uh, and it's got a little balcony you can shoot from. Yeah. But um, no, I just, I was just there this weekend and it just, you, you come out of there and you've got like 10 new minutes because they're so supportive you can just fuck around and you work with the best. This guy, Ari, you know this guy? He's from yeah. Estonia. Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah, remember actually, his last name. Uh, what is it? Mati. Mati. Yeah. Dude, that guy's a killer. Yeah, he is. He is like, you know, and he's been, he's only been doing it like 10, 12 years, but he started in Europe and then he came over here and uh, who was telling me? Wait, is, is Ari like a, he's like a MMA, like a black boot belt? Yeah. yeah like he's, he's a, a black badass boot. black boot. Yeah. He's a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he relates to Rogan on a lot of levels. Yeah. You know, I, I saw them hanging out and it was a lot of talking about fighting as well <laughs> as stand-up comedy. Was Joe, was Joe, how much of, how, okay, like, I'll, let me put it this way. I recognize Tom probably 65% from when I met him, right? He's changed a lot in good ways, in a lot of good ways. Like, yeah. But, but like, there's, like him, when he first got money, like there were parts of him that it was fun to watch him get money. Yeah. But then, then there's parts where he, like all of a sudden he bought like a Gucci shirt. I was like, well, who's this guy? <laughs> you know, or like, yeah. so like how, how recognizable is Joe Rogan from the day you met him to the guy you know today? Interesting question. Um, when I met Joe, he had leased a Honda, but it was the, the sporty Honda. What was the... Was it the prelude, prelude or something? Prelude. Yeah. Yeah. He had one of those and like, you know, we were making the same money. We were going out for 50 bucks a night. He had no fucking cash, but Joe had a black leather jacket and he had uh, this prelude. I think it was a prelude, but anyway, it was a shitty leased car and he couldn't afford it. And so they repossessed it. And so, and I, meanwhile, I had like a 69 Chevy it was all beat up and I was just, I was fixing it myself. And, yeah. and, and, but everything about, you know, he would get takeout food, which like at that age, I was like, 
Who the fuck pays somebody else to cook for them? You yeah. you make macaroni and cheese, you slice up hot dogs, and you drive your 69 Chevy and you get <laughs> you have five roommates. And he had a basement with a heavy bag and a leased Honda. And so then they repossessed it. And then he said he had put, he had installed. Remember those radios back yes, in the 80s? That you could pull out and walk out? into class with them. So he had one of those that he had installed into the car. And we went to the lot and climbed the fence where it was repossessed to take the radio back out again. And Shut I was like, up. this guy's fucking nuts. So it's the same mentality. <clears throat> like I'm talking about. He's got some guy rebuilding a classic Mustang for him right now. It's like, hey, that's, that's always who he was. Yeah. He dresses exactly the same. His style of comedy. His pants are just as short today as they were back then. <laughs> Will you pull up the picture on? They really are. His yeah. pants are aggressively short, and yeah. I fucking, I'm there for it. Right, right. I love it, and I wear short pants because of guys like that. Yeah. He's got aggressive legs. Yeah. <laughs> Still wearing the same fucking pants. Still wearing the same fucking pants. He grew into his head. His head was too big he for his body his back head. then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, we used to we used to hang out and that apartment I lived in with I had a female roommate that was his girlfriend. So he would sleep over all the like for most real? nights. Yeah. And then we would then we'd get up and we would go and we would write. And we would write all the time. And that's it was just he has the same excitement for creating new material, riffing on new material, you know, like obsessing about it. Like that's the same. And his style of comedy of just like taking, taking an idea and just fucking hurricaning it out to the audience. Like it's this, it's the same, you know, I don't, I can't think he's changed in the sense that I think he was more angry back then. Yeah. Like he would have bursts of anger justified when you're, when you're coming up as a comic you yeah. get fucked with by the older comics. Oh, yeah. And there was this one guy, I'll say his name, Vinny Favorito. I know Vinny Favorito. Yeah. So Vinny Favorito was fucking with Joe one time, and I saw Joe just put him in a corner. He didn't put his hands on him, but it was as if he had his hands on him. He literally just backed him into a corner. Really? Yeah, because Vinny was, Vinny was, I forget, he was like talking down to Joe. And Joe, even when he was an opener, when he was an open micer, yeah. He had the attitude of a headliner. Really? Yeah. And so like he didn't he didn't take any shit. And Vinny was this tough guy from East Boston, you know, and he had the he had a jacket from a pool hall around the corner. And he was kind of a he he shook me down once playing pool. He fucking took me. He he conned Vinny? me. Vinny? Yeah, he conned me. Because Joe's an amazing pool player. Yeah. Yeah. We wow. yeah, we just shot. I I did Joe's podcast last week, and then we always we do three hours on the podcast and then we do three hours on the pool table back yeah. to back. That's his favorite. Yeah, that's, it's interesting. It's like, I don't know. I, my favorite part of doing Joe's podcast is that pool table. Yeah. Because you, I get there early or I'll stay late. Uh -huh. And uh, depending on how much I drank, we'll play pool. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's my favorite part is the is just sitting there and bullshitting. Yeah. And then when he gets excited, uh -huh. he like lines up a shot and then stands up at the pool. And he's like, dude, have you heard what dot, dot, dot happened? And then you're like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. oh my God. I know. And when it gets too heated. He starts to go, we got to stop talking. I can't fucking shoot when I get this, I get this worked up. <laughs> and it's always like, uh, you know, it's shit talking, but I feel like it's all based on for him character. He doesn't get, he doesn't care necessarily about your comedy. He cares about your character. He, if you fuck people over, if you're a phony, then he gets very upset. His thing with me, and I, I may be oversharing, but I don't think I am. But his thing with me has always been uh, people who take advantage of me for my niceness. Mm -hmm. That's where he gets, that's where he gets a, where I can see his hair raise. Yeah. And he's like, dude, no, fuck that. I remember one time something was happening with someone and, and, was, and I was like, and I was, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. And I was like, I was like, I don't know, man, I don't even know what to do. I just, yeah. I'm never going to say anything. I'll just fucking, and Joe just texts back, choose violence. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember his favorite story is when we were in Boston, there was this club owner. He wasn't a club owner. He was a booker. Yeah. And he had like fucking 20 rooms in New England, like Tuesday night at a Chinese place in, you know, Wisconsin, yeah. was Wayne, Wisconsin, like these little towns in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island. 
And so you call them up and the guy will fill up your book. But again, it's 50 bucks a night, no gas money, no hotel. Sometimes you're driving a fucking Maine. It's three hours. Yeah. No hotel room, 50 bucks. And sometimes you're driving the headliner because all the headliners had DUIs. So nobody could drive. So your job was to drive to wherever they live, pick them up, take them up there, get them back in the car because now they're drunk again. And so, and then he wouldn't pay you on top of it. He would like, <laughs> he would bounce checks and uh, I'll say his name. His name was Bill Downs. <laughs> and they used to call him no money downs because the money never came through. And so he, you'd build up these debts with him, um, you know, which at 50 bucks a pop, he owed me like a thousand dollars at one point, which was like, you know, my rent was 300 yeah. at that. And I needed the money. So, I go up to uh, a gig in New Hampshire. And before I walk on stage, I go, Billy, I I go, I don't want to go long. I forgot my watch. I go, let me borrow your watch. So he gives me his watch and I do my set and I fucking duck out the side door and I drive home. It was a gold watch. And uh, I get a call the next day and he goes, uh, hey, big guy. Everybody's big guy. Hey, big guy. Uh, yeah, you forgot to give me a watch back there last night. I said, Billy, I didn't forget that. You forgot to pay me the $1,000 you owe me. <laughs> and he's like, are you kidding me? I, I go, yeah, I know what this watch is worth, and it's a lot more than $1,000. <laughs> so we arranged a, an exchange, and we went to a Dunkin' Donuts in Kenmore Square. I said, I said don't, don't even think about bringing a checkbook. I want cash <laughs> in a brown bag. And he showed up, and he met me there, and he handed me the bag, and he smiled at me, and he goes, you got me, big guy. You got me. <laughs> And then, and then we're walking out and he goes, uh, Hey, you want to do the laughing lobster up in, uh, <laughs> up, up in Newburyport next week? And I go, yeah, I always wanted to do that gig. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I have fucking this special. I went a ton of money out of my pocket that I'll never get back. Yeah. This career is always about, are you going to be the one that goes a little bit further that pushes a little bit beyond the comfort zone and 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 look, I've never. Wow, that's a that is a <clears throat> that is a prolific statement. And yeah, it's, and it's prolific on so many ways. Keep going. I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, you. I'm just saying, like, as far as success is gone, I was joked that like I crawl my way to the middle and I'm staying right there. Yeah. Like it's kind of a sweet spot. Like you, you're gonna fall. <laughs> you are you are so fucking high. You're the number one touring comedian. There's no way you can maintain that, and it's gonna end, and you're gonna be. Oh, you're going to have to commiserate yourself with doing 10,000 seaters. It's going to be rough. <laughs> but I know you're afraid of that. And I'm, and I'm not because I got nowhere to fall. I'm just like, I got a nice soft landing. You know, what am I going to do? I'm going to go from 250 to 220 seats, whatever. I can handle that. And so, uh, so I, but I feel like it's weird that I, I have showed up this hard for so many years, but I never, I never broke through, but you know, I don't feel like I never won't. Like, I still feel like maybe this special, the reason I dug, dug into my pocket and put this special, I was like, because I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm really good and I want more people to know about it. Yeah. So I just keep pushing, you know, I'm 58 and I feel invigorated. This special made me feel young again. It made me go on everybody's podcast, which wow. I haven't done in fucking, wow. That's fucking few years. Okay. Yeah. I bought, I just bought a new car. I'll show it to you up front. I, I've been driving a Prius for 12 years. I bought a brand new Mustang. Fuck. And I yes. just, I just, I'm fucking, I'm just having this kind of my kid because I'm an empty nester. I think that's what launched it. You know, you're talking to a yes, I do three day old yep. empty nester. Yep, I saw the crying on the uh, on the internet. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, there, okay, I want to go through and, and pick apart what you said because there's so many fucking great life lessons in that. There is number one. uh, Putting yourself out there. That is the number one thing that comics don't do enough of. And it was really bad in, in our generation. I say our generation, considering when I'm just, I think I'm like, I'm I'm a freshman to your junior. Yeah. But like, there were people that despised uh, guys like Kevin Hart who were ambitious. If you were ambitious at in, out of New York, people would be like, the fuck are you trying to do? Yeah. And, and, right. and But it was people who were afraid to put themselves out there. Yeah. They made fun of the guys that had mailing lists. Yes. That was a big like point of, of, uh, yeah, that's hacky having a mailing list. It's like, well, what's the internet now? It's a giant mailing list. Kevin Hart used to put out cards on every table Yep, and he would pull them out and then he'd register all the emails. Mm -hmm. And I remember someone mocking him 
So you go around and you just pick up all the cards and mm -hmm. Kevin Hart's like, yeah, I pick them up. And then I put them all in the computer and I type them all in and they mocked him. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing that. I remember watching people mock ambition and I would be, I would be a part of that too. Going yeah. like, like, so Dane spent $25,000 on a website mm -hmm. on a fucking website. Mm -hmm. I remember Dane telling me there's this thing, my space where you get on, you chat with your fans. And I remember being like, I'm, I'm a comic. I'm not going to do that work. Yeah. But there was, and then all of a sudden when I let go of that, that's when I started to do well. When I started going like, and my, for me, it was, it was the not being afraid to put out shitty videos. Mm -hmm. It was like every one, and it's like fishing. You're going to hit every now and then. Yeah. No one remembers. No one watches the shitty video. No one watches the shitty video. The, everyone watches the one that pops off. And they're like, dude, your videos are fucking awesome. Yeah. And they're like, and you're in your head. You're like, I've only had like three good videos uh -huh. and they're like oh they're but they kill it you're killing it and yeah. you're like okay well then you learn from the ones that are killing yeah and yeah. then you start learning from the ones that suck too mm -hmm. going okay now that i know why that one sucked manscaped i hope you're cool i'm going a little off book and manscaped has the best reads in the business they really do but i'm so excited to unveil their latest masterpiece the, from manscaped the lawnmower 5.0 ultra and Ford's gold. Oh my God. They are really setting the gold standard out here. This is so amazing. It's a two parter. And if you want to make your grooming routine a statement of sophistication and style, this is the tool you'll need. Experience the unparalleled precision with the next gen dual skin safe blade head, one trimmer blade, and one foil blade. Designed for flawless performance, these blades aren't just about looks. They are engineered for excellence. The updated trimmer blade features a longer and wider, rounder teeth to tackle hair effortlessly, while the full blade provides sleek, smooth finish. The first, the updated blade trimmer features longer and wider, rounder teeth that cut easily through hair. And here's where things get interesting. The foil blade, crafted to transcend the boundaries of of your typical trim achieved with the trimmer blade, this foil blade is designed to leave you with a finish that is irresistibly sleek and utterly bare. It's got a light. Can you see the light? Hang on, you got to turn it on. And then look at the light turn on right there. Do you see that? By the way, that is genius. That is. This was made by a guy who really shaves his balls because when you shave your balls, you're doing it over a toilet and you can't see anything. But you turn this freaking light on and you see everything. I'm telling you right now, and I love that it comes in this. Anyone who takes their trimmers on the road knows that you don't want to just let them fly around your bag. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped for all their grooming needs and get the special edition Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra in Forge Gold while supplies last. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code BERT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code BERT at manscaped.com. Let's face it. If you live where I live... <laughs> You deal with bugs in and around your house. And if bugs are even a minor problem for you, you have to check out our next sponsor, Pesty. With summer winding down and the winter nights getting cold, spiders, ants, and other bugs are looking for somewhere warm to nest. Do you know where that place is? I do. But with Pesty, do-it-yourself pest control, you can make sure they don't choose your house. Pesty is a do-it-yourself pest control company on a mission to provide pro-grade pest control at a fraction of the cost of most pest control companies. With Pesty, there's no more waiting all day for the bug guy to show up when you can just spray it yourself in a few minutes. While other pest companies charge hundreds of dollars to make one-size-fit-all plans for you and everyone around you, Pesty makes a customized treatment plan for you based on your location, your bugs, your climate, all of it, plus the specific chemicals that are rotated so that the bugs don't build up a tolerance, which makes it so much more effective over time. I'm telling you, man, our, our real problem, and I have it in my sauna right now because it is, it's winding down, is uh, black widow spiders. They And they nest where you sit, under where you sit, so you don't see them. You look in, you go, everything's fine. Dude, we do not have that problem because Burt Kreischer uses Pesty. Now is the time to protect your home from bugs for less, with Pesty. Head to Pesty.com slash BurtCast and use promo code BurtCast for an extra 10% off your order. Once again, that's Pesty.com backslash BurtCast for 10% off and make sure to use my promo code BurtCast so that they know that I sent you. Yeah. The other thing you said in here was it made me feel young again. That's the only key. The only key to all of this. Yeah. And my parents, my parents built a new house like like five years ago, they started building a new house, maybe six years ago. And they're like, 
67 at the time. And I said, why are you guys building a new house? My dad said, because I'm not dead yet. (laughs) (laughs) He goes, what do you want me to just stay in this old house with your mom and die here? Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, I guess that was what my thought was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, somebody said, I pulled up to Corolla's yesterday in in the the new Mustang and somebody goes, uh, are you having a midlife crisis? And Corolla looks at him and he goes, no, he's having a renaissance. I said, fuck yeah. That's exactly what I want. Yeah. Dude, empty nesting sucks so fucking. Yeah, it's Okay, oh, here's the third thing you said. I will fall one day. I know that. I know that. Can I tell you the beauty of me is I'm just dumb enough to have appreciated every step. <laughs> yeah. Like there's some people, there's some people that we know in this business who as they blow up, they feel like finally I've deserved this my whole life. This is where I belong. Uh-huh. I never felt like I belonged there. Mm-hmm. So I got to enjoy, and you've seen it. You've seen yeah, it Yeah, you're a guest. You're a guest I'm in a, your own success. How excited do I get when we go into the locker rooms at these arenas to work mm-hmm. out? How excited do I get when celebrities show up backstage? Mm-hmm. Uh, every aspect of When a this. golf cart picks us up at the RV <laughs> and takes us to an amusement park, and you're giggling the entire way to the amusement park. It's the only thing. It started at Travel Channel. It started at Travel Channel. Uh, the second season of Birth Conqueror, I knew we were getting canceled. I knew we were getting canceled, and they were building my man cave, and I had to go to uh, Not- Knott's Berry Farm, and they got and Travel Channel got me. And they, I already knew we were getting canceled. I already knew it. I'd already had the phone call, and but still, Travel Channel sent me a town car to take me to Knott's Berry Farm, and I got in the town car, and I said, "Well, <clears throat> drink it in, big guy. This is the last time you will be getting in a town car that you don't pay for. Never again." Will this luxury be afforded to you because Mm -hmm. you don't have it? You missed it. You fucked up. And I said, next time you ever get in a town car, man, you better fucking appreciate it because these are fucking nice. Mm -hmm. Especially like, you don't, you sit in this, I mean, sit in a town car and drive from the 405 to get down to Knott's Berry Farm and you don't do anything and you're on your phone and you're just relaxing. Yeah. I was like, man, don't ever. And so as I, I got moments in my career, like first time I got a tour bus, Man, you better fucking like this. Mm-hmm. You better fucking like this because you're never getting on a tour bus again. Mm-hmm. And then you buy a tour bus and you're like, <laughs> you better fucking like this. And then you buy a second tour bus. <laughs> but but it's it's funny you say that because it is the it is the thing. There's such a thing about us as comedians where we are kind of all cut from the same cloth, but we've witnessed each other make those pitfalls. I watched young dudes blow up, younger, always younger. And be like, yeah, this is what I deserve. Mm-hmm. And you were like, it's it's a gift. Mm-hmm. Like, not everyone gets what you're getting. You should really be appreciative. It's, I had that exact thought this morning. I can't. I was in my kitchen and I was thinking about. Oh, I was thinking about how I get annoyed by my housekeeper <laughs> because she doesn't leave shit where it was. And then I thought to myself. Can you imagine explaining this to somebody in Guatemala that has fucking six kids living in a one room? Like, wait, they they come in your house and they clean? What do you do? Why would they do that in your house? And I was just like, yeah, as soon as you think you deserve that, you become an asshole. You ready for mine? Yeah. This morning, I'm getting out of my sauna, getting into my polar plunge. I, I Greg, I almost recorded it and put it on Instagram. <laughs> and the leaf blower next door was blowing leaves, but he wasn't going like, vroom. he was going, vroom, 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 yeah. vroom, vroom. and I almost said, is it too much to ask to blow leaves at a consistent level while I polar plunge? <laughs> I go, how am I supposed to polar plunge while this asshole is blowing fucking leaves? I need to meditate for three minutes to be able to polar plunge. The fuck does he not know anything about longevity? And I, Heard myself say that oh. and I went, wow, oh. how disconnected yeah. am I? And I was like, I was like, and, and then, and then, you know, I tried to write the joke immediately about how, di- you know, as I, and I go, I wonder what he'd say if I told him I'm trying to polar plunge over here. <laughs> and then in, this is how stupid I am in his accent. He goes, oh, I'm so sorry, but my daughter has fucking lupus. <laughs> and I was like, and then I was like, I don't think kids can get lupus. And I was like, I should probably Google that. And I was like, I'm gonna scrap that joke altogether. But that's what I was thinking today. <laughs> you know, that cold plunge would be good for my daughter who has leukemia. <laughs> Does it help the swelling? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm fucking your cold plunge up. 
Wait, did he just turn Asian? <laughs> did, did the Mexican guy have the day off? You know I'm bad with accents. <laughs> the Mexican got the... Asians are such hard workers. They're taking their jobs. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, no, it's... um. I think it's good that you appreciate it, but there is a, is there a part of you that's worked so hard for so long that you feel like it'll be a relief when things slow down? Oh, things have slowed down. They have. Oh, completely. I've, I've, I'm off. T- I mean, I'm. No, I mean, when they slow down, like there's no longer as much of a demand for you to work as hard. Oh, uh, I don't know. I think I'll gradually ease into that. Mm. Like uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't, I don't I can't remember. I'm not supposed to talk about any, any of this probably. But we just had a meeting, and and I was, and Leanne was like, he needs more time off, and she's yeah. like, you can't put him back on tour because he just it, he'll implode, and I will work, I will hard work at a, at a clip that will kill me, it will kill me, and I yeah, won't see it coming, yeah. and I and, and you, I mean, even at my like healthiest, you you've seen you've seen me at my best and my worst, at my healthiest, I'm on a cleanse, we're working out with Josh Bridges, we're in Colorado, mm-hmm. we go to Casa Bonita, and you watch my eyes flicker. And go, can we get off this class fast and start drinking? Yeah. And I was, and I, you I just lasted watched. two days on that fucking fast. <laughs> that was the saddest thing I've ever seen. No, was, one day. One day. It was, it was one, one day. day. It was one day. <laughs> <laughs> it lasted one day. And I and I made Peter only last one day. Yeah, that's right. I got him to break with me. <laughs> it was Casa fucking Bonita. Tell everyone how right. great. I want you to do two. You things. really put fast in in fast. Yes. I want you to tell everyone. How great Casa Bonita is! I want I want the Trey and Matt Parker, Parker and Stone respectively to hear this as a love song for yeah. their investment in Casa Bonita because it we had a f- and I didn't tell you guys anything we were signing. I'd up I'd never for. heard of the place. That was the best part of the experience. Is it was like a little kid not knowing that a Disneyland existed, yes. and then walking them into the park. We show up. And you're driving down like a nondescript, dusty Colorado road with strip malls. And then all of a sudden you kind of see something in the distance and this kind of castle looking place, this magical place pops up and you walk in. First of all, we were met at the front door by a concierge and two assistants. So they gave us the VIP treatment. Meanwhile, it takes nine months to get a reservation to get in there. And we strolled in and you walk in and immediately the noise hits you, but it's not a gross amusement park noise. It's just, there's activities going on. Immediately there's a guy doing uh, uh, juggling. There's a guy doing card tricks. And in the distance, you see a lagoon and you're like, why is there a lagoon in the middle of a restaurant? And you see that it goes up like three stories. It's like a, it's like a gutted mall that's just been filled with adult fun. And so they walk us around. We go to the arcade. We go to the, there's a little theater. And then they take us up to, I think this, I can't say the best table because every table in the place has its own identity. It's not, they all have different nooks and overlooks. And, and so they take us up a flight of stairs and we sit in this, it's like, it's, it's jutting out above the lagoon, our table and they bring over this guacamole that was like the best guac I've ever had. The food is fucking spectacular. And we're sitting there and we start getting, and we're ordering the food and the waiter's hilarious. And all of a sudden, a smoking hot chick in a bikini is standing six <laughs> inches from me, holding onto the rail by our table. We're, we're three stories up. And we're like, I'm like, what the? F-? And then she dives into the look. <laughs> I'm like, what's happening here? <laughs> that was insane. It was my favorite. Because I, not only had I been to Castle Bonita, but I had worked at Castle Bonita. Yeah. Like I worked there for a travel channel oh, show. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I jumped off the, I jumped off the high dive what? with the divers. And so I wonder if you can even find a picture of me at Castle Bonita. Type in Bert Castle Bonita. I guess they had time to put the water back in since you left. <laughs> yeah, they did. Well, the, that's the one thing that Matt and Trey did is they upgraded this place. Yeah. So when I worked there, it was kind of like going out of business. It was like rough. Like the food, you know stereotypically wasn't the best and 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 the show was pretty good but the show was still as fun but i knew what to expect it was so hard for me not to tell you guys what we were going to yeah and and you know me i want to just share everything Uh and when we went and i knew we i will say we got the best seats in the house because 
We are right next to, it's like, it's like, it's, it's where, how do you value a stadium? Do you want to be by the end zone where they score the touchdown? They jump into the stands and you can grab them. Some people do. This is the best seat because as they come out to jump off, if you don't know what's happening, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the? Yeah. She climbed the rocks. She scaled the rocks. Uh-huh. And then do you remember the one guy climbed the rocks, scaled the rocks, and he goes, the fucking machine. Yeah, right, right, right. And we're like, yeah, baby. Yeah, that was great. Matt and Trey, you guys have killed it. Casa yep. Bonita is so fun. If you ever go to Denver. And then the food was amazing. Dude, their carnitas have changed my view of pork. I've stopped eating pork for a long time. Uh-huh. Because I just, I was always like, it's never like. What's a long time a day? <laughs> By the way, I have to, this is even funnier. I never stopped eating pork. <laughs> I just, I, cause I eat bacon every day. <laughs> but no, it was, it was, it was the, the, the butt, the, the butt, yeah. pork, 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 I stopped eating that cause it was always like wet. Yeah. Pulled pork is yeah. what I stopped eating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh the discipline. Th- those carnitas, those carnitas were fucking. Yeah. Amazing. And then they had some kind of like a sweet. Sopapilla. Yes. Yeah, sopapilla. Was it a sopapilla yeah, or they, pupusa or something? They, they start serving them at the beginning of the meal. It's really a dessert. And they, they start serving them at the beginning of the meal. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, um, it was such an amazing night. And, uh, and then we went, what did we do? After? Oh, and then we went, saw, saw Burr perform. Oh yeah. After went, that. Yeah, yeah. Went to Burr. Yeah. And then hung out for like an hour backstage after yep. the show. Yeah. It was fucking great, except for Peter and them sat in the in the wings waiting for us to be done. Oh, <laughs> it was yeah. just me, you, and Burr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, and and uh, and uh, Dean Delray. Dean Delray. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a fucking great. And then that we worked out with Josh Bridges. Yeah, is that where? Did you fuck your shoulder up there? Oh, dude, I hurt my back really bad, and I I didn't want to feel like a pussy because like. You know, I'm 150 pounds. I've always been like the skinny guy. I've never been like the strongest guy, and I think I was looking at you guys and, you know, Peter's like, what, what was he like in the Navy SEALs or something? No, 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 no. <laughs> Kyle was oh, Kyle. A, Kyle was in, just in the army. He wasn't yeah, like anything yeah. big in the army. Right. He was just but in Peter's the army. in amazing shape. Peter's in great shape. Yeah. Peter's like, uh, he works out all the time. Yeah. And then there's you and, uh, and you're, you know. <laughs> I don't get a good thing. Well, <laughs> I look at you as like, you're like a Corvette engine in a UPS truck. <laughs> There's a lot of room, room, but when the ti- when the when the tires hit the concrete, there's not a lot of squealing. There is. I definitely got us there. I definitely organized it. But when we started doing those sled pushes, I was like, "What's the altitude?" You can see. Have you seen? They have the whole video online. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, oh pull up Josh Bridges' channel. Oh, but keep talking. I got, so I so he started out with the sled pushes, and then we did uh, that bike that was very hard to pedal hitler's tricycle oh dude and i don't know what it was bike. and then he had me do rows and while i did the rows my back just went oh and then hanging when i hung on the bar i think it lengthened my spine which made it vulnerable to the rowing that's it, I, we all did the upside down we have an upside down table i think you saw it in our thing yeah and we thought it would help our backs yeah and i did it yesterday and it it the same thing that happened to you happened to me yesterday. Yeah. Where to lo- all of a sudden you feel it in your lower back. You're like, that's not a normal feeling. Yeah. Maybe the compression should be there for a second. Right. But but yeah, you did the, you saw if you could do a, a hang for a minute. Yes. And that's what lo- loosened up your back to a bad place. Too much. And then I, and then I was injured and then we were doing those sandbags where you pick them up on your shoulder. And I was in so much pain, but I didn't want to be a pussy and give in. So I kept doing the workout. Dude, my back was out for weeks. Really? Yeah, I couldn't work out. I couldn't do anything. Holy shit! And yeah. so, what's what what's going on with your arm now? Now I've got. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I played, I played hockey in high school, and I hyperextend or whatever my shoulder, and it just never got better. And now it's got calcium buildup. There's calcium deposits in the joint. So they got to go in now and they have to zap it. They, they, you know, they go in with a, you know, a. Do you have to go under? Yeah, I would imagine. I yeah. said, I want to have my, hang on. You went at the very end. You see all of us on the assault bike. That's, I want to see that. Um, I had, I had to get surgery on my elbow, on my tricep because I ripped the tendons and it started retracting. Yeah. 
And I said, my biggest fear is going under. And so I said to the doctor, do I have to go under? And he went, no, 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 I'll give you an apple. You can bite onto that. And I was like, for real? And he goes, are you fucking stupid? And I was like, I don't want to go under. And he was like, you don't want to be awake. He was like, trust me, you don't want to be awake for this. And I was like, is it bad? And he was like, I'm going to open up your arm and pull your tri. He's like, it's really bad. Yeah. He's like, so go to the end. You'll see us on the assault bike. There you go. Is that Greg on the assault bike? You did really Uh, great on the assault bike. I hit it hard. I'm breaking it, baby! (laughs) That is, people don't understand how fucking hard that is. Yeah. It's all, it's it's your legs and your arms. It's a push and a pull. It's and like you are it's, it's like a street fight. Now people should see Josh Bridges compared to you. Yeah, because he he goes, go no no go to the second one for Josh Bridges. Here's Pete. We do this thing we call it an acid bath where we see how hard we can go for like a minute. I think we're going twenty seconds. And look at him; he's just a fucking yeah. you see it in his eyes. Yeah. Look at my shoulder in there. I, mean, I just look great. Your shoulders look good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 20 calories in 20 seconds. What? Yeah. It's fucking insane. Yeah. It's like having a fist fight. Go ahead, Greg. Oh, I just said the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I literally just said that. Agreed. Here's Greg. <laughs> Look at that old man. What's he doing on there? Wow. Peter, I think, beat it. I, I think. Oh, this is going to be big. This is going to be big. It's going to be big. Pete. Keep it up, Pete. Keep it up, Pete. Keep it up, Pete. That's where you start gassing out. Yeah. That's look at him just he's giving up. You can't help it. Your body what was it? How much was it? Started thirty three. Started thirty three, twenty three dollars. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see let's see if the B man beats him. Pete never beats me at anything. Let's see if I can beat him. Oh oh this is Kyle. In, um, fascinating podcast content, by the way. Us watching each other do the assault bike. But <laughs> I, but this is the thing: is if you try an assault bike for twenty seconds, yeah, 58, 80, you got twenty-two calories. calories. All right, Josh hasn't gone yet. Josh will win. I know the end of this video, but let's see what your boy gets. No one. Ever. Pete never beats me at anything. Mass moves mass. That's the other trick to this: is I'm, yeah. I weigh heavier than them, yeah. so I can push harder than they can. At altitude. That's right. We were at altitude. And then we went in his backyard and jumped in that cold plunge. All right. Josh wins it. You can end it. Yeah, we went into his back and jumped in. That's the first time I've gotten into a cold plunge where I was like, oh, this feels good. That's how hot I was. Oh, it was so hot. Yeah. I felt like we were right next to the sun. It was so hard to fucking breathe. Right, right. Yeah, that was tough. Did you shoot? Had you already shot your special when we were on tour? Oh, wait. Yeah, I had. Okay. Yeah. And, And then, and then, uh, how do you, how do you decide? This is sounds like I feel like an idiot asking this. How do you decide what decide when to release it on YouTube? Um, I took way too long editing it because looking at my stupid face and listening to jokes that I'm so tired of, <laughs> I couldn't edit it. I just yeah. I would try and I would put it off. It took me so long, and then so finally I gave myself a deadline by going, you know what? I'm putting this out on July 28th. And this was in April because I was like, all right, now I got to finish because it needs to be loaded up three months before. Yeah. And so I just came up with that date to, to end the madness. And uh, and then I had started working on the new. Once I shot that, I started working on the new material for the new hour. Yeah. And my my deadline was I was working the mothership the weekend that the special came out. So, oh, wow. so I just did it and I did a brand new hour five times. And I feel, again, like feeling young. I felt like I'd been doing that hour for so long, you know, mixing stuff in. But essentially the bones of that hour I'd been doing for like three years. And I was so fuck. I didn't realize how sick I was of it until I had a new hour. And all of a sudden I felt like I had wings. Like I am so excited to do my hour right now. You know? How do you, what's, so what advice do you have for people? Because right now I'm feeling the, the sadness. Of being an empty nester. Yeah. Like just, it's so profoundly quiet in our house. Yeah. Not even the dogs are barking. Uh-huh. Like nothing's happening. Right. And it, and and what's what's crazy is that house used to be so loud. 
Uh-huh. Like that house, especially the the other house we lived in, the smaller house, that house was so loud. Our neighbors would reach out to us and see if things were okay. Uh-huh. I mean, and 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 what's crazy is I always called George and my oldest George, and our neighbor's name was George. So I would yell for my daughter at times, and he'd yell from his house, "What?" <laughs> and now, and now it's just it's like like Leanne and I came home last night. I I don't I know that Leanne is not gonna like what I'm sharing, but like Leanne and I came home last night, and I I, I couldn't. And number one, I couldn't find a reason to leave the office because I was like, I have no reason. I might as well keep working. Uh-huh. Or am I going to go home? What's there? And then I went home. I said, well, well, oh, we should watch the debates. And then we're just watching the debates, looking at each other, going, this is horrible. Uh-huh. And I was like, what do you want to do? She goes, we want to go to Target. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 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 let's go to Target. <laughs> and then and then we went to Target. And I'm in Target for you know an hour or so. I look at my watch. It's It's 7.45. Yeah. I go, this day hadn't even started. Yeah. And then I was like, I guess I could smoke pot or jerk off or it's like, I, I go, maybe I'll get into the sauna. And then we get home and then she is, she got a hair up her ass. She's going to do stuff, right? She's, we bought care packages for all the kids that are in college, all our friends' kids. Uh-huh. And we bought them all care oh, packages. Nice. So we're sending those out, but she already wants to get onto a project. I don't really care about it. I bought the shit. Mm-hmm. I don't care about packing the bag. Yeah. And so she starts her thing and I'm just standing there by myself going like, like, I don't know what to do. Uh, and and so... You're I, not good with nothing to do. I'm really not good with nothing to yeah. do. Yeah. Like, I need something to look forward to. I need a treat. I need I need something to... I need, I need people around me. I want the excitement. Mm-hmm. And then I wake up and it's just silent. Yeah. It's silent. Like, I was telling someone today, when we... My parents had a beach house when we were younger, when Leanne and I were young. And dating and married and had kids. <clears throat> and I remember one time, it, this is what's haunting me. I remember one time the girls were all there. I was doing Tampa improv and they all stayed a little later. They stayed until like Tuesday. And then I was doing Cleveland on Thursday. So they all left Wednesday morning. Yeah. I was going to leave Thursday morning. And I dropped them off at the airport, I came back, went to sleep, woke up Wednesday afternoon. And it was so silent. It made me sad because uh. that house was so filled with so much noise with both our little girls. Uh huh. And I was, and my dad and my mom and dad there, and they weren't even talking. They're just both sitting on their iPads. And I was like, I was like, is this not killing you guys? And they're like, this is our life, buddy. Uh-huh. And I remember hearing that and going, this will never be my fucking yeah. life. And now it is. And by the way, Leah and I, our relationship, probably the best it's ever been. I'm really happy with everything, but um, I would love to be on tour. Yeah. I would love to have dropped the girls off and just gotten in the bus. It's v- It's very weird how your dynamic with your wife changes because- you know, we went from a foursome to a threesome to a twosome, you know, and like you, you would, first of all, having one kid home alone, that's a big adjustment because now it feels like you're both just staring at the kid and the kid's looking at you like, what? Yeah. You're like, I don't know. We, we used to be able to play off each other and now it's just you and uh, it's too much attention. Like, I feel sorry for only children. It's just too much attention for two adults. Yeah. And so- I remember when my when my daughter left, I was inside watching a football game, and then I and then I was like, I go, are you smoking pot? Like my wife doesn't smoke pot. I'm, she's like, yeah, I'm smoking pot. All of a sudden, she's like making blender. I don't drink. She's making blender drinks. I'm like, is this where we're headed? And now, like, and now she has a drink every night. But now <laughs> my daughter's back at home. My son is out. He graduated, and then he he just moved out. And uh, that's got to be fun when they show back up. It is great when they show up again. But you know what? They're also, it's kind of nice to have, to rebuild the relationship with your wife again. Like we really feel like we're dating again. Yeah. You know, we, we go out more. We, I, you know, I just feel like, like I'm not ready for my kids to live at home permanently. I, I don't, I don't know that I want, some people are like, no, it's great. No, I really, I just like my wife. I, they, the kids kind of get in our way a little bit. I said, you're to, not there yet. I'm just saying you'll get to a place where you feel closer to what I'm saying right now. It takes a few months. I, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I was, how was I trying? I was trying to say this to Tom. I was, or maybe it was Leanne. I, my favorite thing is when people destroy comedy. When they destroy it. Like when they go, when you have an idea of a joke and then someone goes, yeah, that's funny, but like, like uh-huh. I'll give you a good example. Louis C.K. went one time and someone was like, and now they got kids in car seats 
when I was a kid, you rode in the front seat. And Louie goes, yeah, and a lot of kids died. They're not here to laugh at your shitty joke. <laughs> like, that, that's my favorite thing, is when you hear a joke that's like, that's like, <laughs> and uh, I almost got, I got to read it to you, because it, it, I texted, I texted it to a friend, and I didn't realize who I was texting it to. I'm not going to say the guy's name. I didn't realize who I was texting it to, okay? Buddy, I'm a mess. I feel like my parents didn't care about me at all. They just got a divorce. It almost makes me jealous of parents with special needs kids. They never leave. And he wrote, yeah, I have a daughter who's wheelchair bound and can't speak. She needs full-time care. I know exactly how you feel. And I went, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize... And you're and you're just bored. That's just, all. You're just, just bored. On a plane. I was yeah. on a plane. Yeah. And First I was class. A little drunk and just going uh, like texting with my boys. Like uh, anyone that's got kids at that I look because I'm watching videos on Instagram of people dropping off their kids. Uh, it's all happening the same same week. Yeah. And some videos connect and then you're like, and you forget that they also have other children. Right. Oh my God. <sighs> Uh, those are the ones where you're going to sleep at night <laughs> and then you, you're you almost there. Your REMs are starting to kick in. Your heart beats down. And then you have just a, that thought creeps in. And that, that's an hour. Now you're up for an hour. Oh, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. I was like, wow, I feel fucking horrible. Oh, yeah, you should. I told it to Leanne and Leanne's like, oh my God, what's wrong with you? And then I tell it to Tom and he's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 funny because you do. I mean, the, I mean the, that's the sad truth is that you're mourning the best experience you could give your children, which is autonomy and and living their mm -hmm. life and going out and getting to do all the shit you got to do. Yeah. But in a weird, selfish way, I don't know if it's because of our gen, if it's our, our generation and our generation softer than our parents. D did your dad cry when you went to college? No. <laughs> I no. already knew the answer to no, that. No, not at all. No, as a matter of fact. Um, he never came to any of my, I never came to a hockey game. He, no, once. He once came to a high school hockey game. And I remember like, I just, he was six foot two. He was tough from the Bronx. And like, I'm this little shitty kid. And I was like, I want to show off for my dad. So like this guy, uh, the guy, this guy was at the blue line. And my father was standing like just outside the boards behind the glass. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to line this fucker up. And so I'm skating at him and, and I, and, and then the kid sees me coming. I'm skating forever. And he just steps out of the way. And I hurl myself into the glass and crumble right in front of my father. No wonder he didn't come see me play sports. You saw me from a mile away. <laughs> it was the most premeditated I have hit. such a visual of a little speck of a human starting to, s and not getting much bigger, but skating and skating and skating. And the guy looking at his friend going, is he coming for me? I think he is. <laughs> this show is sponsored by Shopify. When you think about businesses that are selling through the roof, like Allbirds or Skims, sure, you think about great products and a cool brand and a brilliant marketing plan, but an often overlooked secret is actually the businesses behind the business making selling simple. For millions of those businesses, that business is Shopify. Nobody does selling better than Shopify. Home of the number one checkout on the planet. And the not-so-secret secret, with Shop Pay, that boosts conversions to up to 50%, meaning way less carts going abandoned and way more sales going on. So if you're into growing your business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell wherever your customers are scrolling or strolling on the web in your store, in their feed, and everywhere in between. Businesses that sell more, sell with Shopify. Not only has Shopify been a sponsor of this podcast for a very long time, but they are for a reason, because we use Shopify. We use Shopify, and we have grown our business from so many different stages. And I'm telling you, man, it's a no-brainer. We ask them to sponsor our podcast, because we want you to know what we know. Here's the deal. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout we use with Shopify. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash birdcast, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash birdcast to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash birdcast. When you went to college, was it just good luck? Did they drive you? Um, my mother dropped, well, first of all, I didn't even apply to college. I went to, 
after high school, I, I wasn't going to go to college. So I saved up some money. I worked two jobs. I was, uh, I was a caddy at a country club. And then I worked at TGI Fridays as a, as a line cook. And so I, after like six months, I saved $3,000. I know it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but yeah. like back then three grand was a lot of money. God damn. And I got a backpack and I went to Europe and I just traveled around for like six months. I just went from, you know, country to country. And I came back and my father goes, congratulations. And I said, what? He goes, you got into Boston University. And I was like, I didn't apply to Boston University. He's like, congratulations. <laughs> he had written my essay. He used like, I would write postcards home to my parents oh, and he took the postcards and he turned it into an essay about my trip to Europe and he applied to BU. And, uh, and I, so basically I'd never been to Boston in my life. So the first, the day before classes started, my mom drove me up and I remember all I had was my dad's army duffel bag, no table, no lamp, no suitcase. I had an army duffel bag and my mom dropped me in front of the dorms. Didn't even come in. She's like, good luck. <laughs> and I and I just walk in and and uh it was the greatest four years of my life. I loved it. You were in, you were out of college in four years? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a big feat? Oh, I my I, daughter's gonna graduate in four years and I I asked her, I said, why? Yeah. She goes, because I'll be done. Uh-huh. And I was like, you're never done. <laughs> You can always find something to do. Don't you love it? She's like, yeah, I love it, but yeah. I'm on to the next chapter of my life. And I went, wow. Yeah. I wish I had that. I might have been sadder the day uh, the day after graduation than I was the day my kids left. I was like, all my friends left Boston and I was staying because I wanted to do comedy. I had started doing comedy my senior year. So yeah. I was staying for that. And all my all my college buddies left. And I was, man, I went from... I had four roommates and they were the best guy. Captain, of, it was the captain of the uh, lacrosse team, captain of the rugby team, captain of the tennis team, and me and this Irish guy. And we just had the best parties. We went every night. We knew bouncers at every club. And, you know, I was just getting laid like crazy. God. I was drinking. I was enjoying it, doing coke. It was great. And then it all ended in one day. Really? Yeah, everybody left. Well, I'll tell you the opposite. I, when I left Florida State, I was like, I'm ready to launch. <laughs> I've been here seven years and I think I'm ready. Yeah. I was like, all my friends have graduated. Yeah. I'm friends with guys that I, I still have a problem with being friends with guys younger than me uh -huh. because I think in college I was 25 and all my friends were like 22. <laughs> were you really 25? I was 25 when I left, left college. <laughs> you weren't dating. How, how young were the girls you were dating? Uh, my age ish, uh -huh. probably yeah. twenty three ish, probably twenty. But she was like, I think she was, yeah, she was probably twenty three. Yeah, I dated a girl my age for a long time, and then the next girl I dated, well, I dated one girl who was, uh, who was like a sophomore when I was twenty two. Okay, I've, so she I, was twenty. I think about her quite often. Mm. I never had sex with her. Really? Yeah, I didn't. Why? I wasn't good at sex. And so I was afraid to share it with someone that I didn't, wasn't really, really tight with. But I would never have a one night stand. I think about her quite often because I, I wonder, I remember one time I'd always had the visual as in a high school of, of being, cause I never could imagine what it would be like to be, have access to a, a girl's body. Uh -huh. Like to be like, they, that they'd allow you to touch them yeah. whenever you wanted. Yeah. Or that they would walk around a room naked. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I remember laying in my bed going like, one day that'll ha that's gonna happen. Like you're gonna be. I was like, can you believe? That? I remember thinking like, that's the wildest thing. One day you'll be in college, and a girl will get out of your bed naked and go to the bathroom, and then come back to your bed naked. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll go to class, and she'll still be in your bed naked, and you can touch her. My wife, she grew up in New York City, and uh, she went to the same school, Cathedral St. John the Divine. You ever heard of that? It's a big cathedral up in Harlem. Yeah. So that's where my wife went to school. And one of her classmates was Ben Stiller. And they they had a similarity because both their fathers were Jewish and their mothers were Irish. And he had a huge crush on her. And uh, I think he asked her out a bunch of times and she always said no. And then I I met him and I was like, uh, I was like, hey, uh, it, it was at a party at Jimmy Kimmel's house. Howard Stern was in town and they were having a party for him. And Ben Stiller was there. And I said, hey, you know, I ended up marrying Erin Covell. And his jaw dropped. And then she walked over and then... 
I was out of the picture all night. I was like, <laughs> nobody's talking to me. They're just like, you know, nose to nose, catching up on old times. I'm like, did I just fuck up? <laughs> he's got a little more clout than me right now. Where is Ben Stiller? What's he doing? He's producing stuff. He did that really cool show, uh, that kind of futuristic show where you go to an office and you forget who you are when you go to the office. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, I didn't see it, but I know what you're talking about. Remember? Yeah, it, like they go to the office and whatever they do at the office when they go yeah. home, they don't remember what they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he produces tons of stuff. Red something is his production company. And uh, I don't know, what has he been acting? I don't know. He's so good. Yeah, I don't understand. Really I don't good. know why. Dude, Tropic Thunder is my top three funniest movies in terms of physically laughing out loud. How often do you physically laugh out loud during a movie where you almost have to pause it? I'm, I'm trying to think the last time I laughed out loud in a movie. I don't know what I don't I don't know what movie I've seen. The last time I laughed out loud, honestly, I mean, besides I'm being serious. Besides watching your special, nice. I'm not even fucking around. Uh -huh. The probably was watching uh, Tires was Shane's new special. Tires yeah. is very funny. So last time I laughed yeah. out loud, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even watching Shane's special, I didn't. I'd, I'd heard all that material before, uh -huh. but I'd always heard it from backstage. Yeah, because I was never in front of stage when he was on. Yeah, and so watching Shane special, I was laughing more at his facial. I've never seen his body movements. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm just. I'm never in front of him. I'm always behind him, so I hear it. Yeah, and so that was. But Tropic Thunder, probably one of the when 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 uh, there's so many parts. But when you meet Simple Jack, yeah, <laughs> that's such a funny idea. It's so fucking funny. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. And Robert Downey Jr. blackface? Are you kidding me? It's, it's perfect. Yeah. It 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 is the definition of you can't say, like, you can't say one thing and then that's the rule because there are there there are exceptions uh -huh. to every rule. Yeah, I mean, when you think about uh... when you think about that movie in particular, and Robert Downey Jr. doing blackface to a black man, uh -huh. talking about cooking collard greens. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. like you're like wow and. Jack Black tied to a tree. Yeah. Saying I'll suck your dick for heroin. Yeah. Uh, like it just nonstop. It's it's almost like like the the Zucker Brothers movies where you just like you have to pause it because I need to I need to not miss something and I can't I can't hear right now. Zuckerbergs were the were the airplanes, right? Yeah. Those movies were I feel like that's Naked they, Gun. They tr they tried to Naked Gun is yeah. so good. Yeah. Naked Gun was so good that there would be things you didn't understand and then your friend would tell you at lunch mm -hmm. and then you'd get the joke. Yeah. We need to take her to a hospital. A hospital, what is it? It's a big building with a lot of windows, but that's not important right now. <laughs> right, right. It's, I was like, yeah. that, those movies were fucking epic. Who's making the best comedies right now? Like movies, movies. Is there, any are they making movies. any comedy movies? I think everything's horror these days. Yeah. Horror is really big genre. Um, Comedies are all very quirky. Like, I like Wes Anderson movies a lot. Yeah. And they can make me laugh out loud sometimes. Not a lot. I, like, they'll have a couple good laugh out Like, Bill Murray will have something that's really great. Sandler's uh, new movie, the Happy Gilmore 2, is going to be fucking awesome. Oh, I didn't know they were he's, making he that. He's making Happy Gilmore 2. And okay. I, I, everyone's been talking about it, but that'll be awesome. Yeah. Sandler always seems to hit out of the park with, yeah. with comedies. Um, yeah, type in top 10 comedies this year. If, Despicable Me, Fall Guy, Ghostbusters, Garfield Movie. Wow. Wow. They're not Jeez, making... they're just not making comedies anymore. Here's what's going to happen is I think now that I think things are changing, I think things are changing, and I think that once they're going to they're going to lower money to make movies. Because it's just no one's going to the movie theater. And once they lower the money, I think more people are willing to roll the dice on, say, $5 million, $7 million, $10 million than they were $30 million or, or $50 million, yeah. you know? Um, who just made a great comedy the other day that I saw? Well. What? Jackpot. 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 Uh, Paul Feig made a great fucking oh, comedy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Paul Feig made a great fucking Who's comedy. Who's in it? For a lot. Uh, Aquafina. Mm -hmm. And uh, John Cena, okay. and and it was a big movie, and it was fun, and it was, but it's 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 an action movie, it's an action comedy. Is it R rated? Probably not. 
It's yeah, for, we're forgetting is uh, Borat. I mean, his last one was fucking hilarious. Which which one? Uh, it was the it was the part two of Borat. Oh, I haven't seen it. Oh, dude, he everything he did so was fucking good. brilliant. Because it's it, it's shocking, but it's smart. It has a point. It has a victim who deserves it. You know, people go, "Oh, it's me." No, these people are racist. They're homophobes, and yeah. he's just highlighting them. He's not making anybody do anything. Yeah. He's just drawing them out. Oh, what he did to Giuliani was no. Giuliani was about to fuck a 21 year old <laughs> camera woman who was interviewing him, and he's, you know, 70 years old. <laughs> They shouldn't have stopped him. If no. they had let that roll 30 seconds more. Are you serious? I don't remember that part. Oh, she basically, she's pretending she's from another country. Well, she is from another country. Yeah. And she's going to interview Giuliani about politics. So they go to a penthouse in a hotel. Cameras are set up. And then they, uh, she starts interviewing him. And then the camera guy goes, oh, we got a problem with the camera. We got to fix it. It's going to be 10 minutes. So she goes, oh, do you want to go in here? And they walk into the bedroom and she closes the door. And then she, I forget what she says, but she tells him to lay back on the bed. And she's like, you know, she looks like she's 20 years old. And uh, he he reaches into his pants. You never saw this. Are you being serious? I swear to God. Well, is this Borat? This is the, the follow-up to Borat. This okay, or maybe I Borat. just saw Borat. Yeah, you didn't see the follow up to Borat. No, no. And he goes to, and then they they rush in and they cut it before it got any worse because it would have it would have compromised her a little bit. I used to do these hidden camera things for the USA Network back in New York when I was young. Yeah. And uh, one time we were in Times Square shooting something, and I had on those eyeglasses that have the camera in them, and I went into the bathroom and I took a piss. And then I came out, the whole crew was fucking dying because they were in Video Village and they could see my cock. I was taking a piss. I'm looking at my penis. They weren't laughing. They were in awe. They were, they were yes. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Greg. <laughs> I get it now. I get the cockiness now. I don't understand why you're so self-confident. It's like, I was, I, I did a show recently and it was all black comics and me. And we sat there and it was at the improv and we're sitting, you know, you know, the upstairs green yeah, room. Yeah. So we're all sitting, there's, there's a, there's a long couch and a beanbag chair. So there's like five people and you're watching the monitor of the stage. And one by one, a guy would go downstairs, he'd perform. Everybody would be like, man, look at that fucking fake ass Chinese shirt and that watch. <laughs> and, and then they come, yo man, good set, good set. Next guy would go down, <laughs> see, and it was like, so like you had to assume they were making fun of you as yeah, well. Yeah. But it was almost like nobody cared. It was just like, all right, they're going to have fun and and it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It was, I, I've, I've had friends that don't enjoy gossip. And I like yeah. Isla, my daughter Isla does not enjoy gossip. I don't trust people that don't enjoy gossip. I said to Isla, Isla genuinely, we had, I, the girls had a friend who loved to gossip. Yeah. And Isla said, you know, it bothers me. I don't like it. Mm. And I can't like that person. And then one day she liked that person and she goes, my favorite thing about her is the gossip. <laughs> It's so fucking hysterical <laughs> yeah. the way, and because it is. I I mean, the feeling of when, like, and I'll I'll just say it to like, because I already said that like with Rogan is like when you show up in his and uh, to go play pool, and you're done the podcast, or even before the podcast. Sometimes we'll play pool before the podcast, mm -hmm. and he shuts the door and he's like, "Bro, have you heard that? And have you heard like the dude? Do you know what's going on with dot dot dot? Mm -hmm. Is this adjacent to Christmas morning when you saw a lot of presents mm -hmm. under the tree, and yeah. you're like, oh." This is going to, this hang is going to hang itself. We're going to yeah. just fucking, oh, it's yeah. the best. And getting a text, we're in a chat, chat thread of gossip. Uh -huh. Yeah. My favorite thing. The back of a, like at the store, the parking lot at the store. Oh. It's the best. Yeah. Because it's fresh. That's that's right off the wire. My, I get, the only thing I'm not good at is uh, someone, we're sitting at the store and someone's like, yo, did you see what's, what's their name special? I always say, nope, I haven't seen it. Because uh -huh. I go, because I have seen them. I watch everyone's specials. Yeah. But I go, I don't like shitting on people's comedy. Like, yeah. I don't like, I don't mind busting balls about someone's act, uh -huh. you know, like, but like, I, and I can trash someone's act to each other, like behind, mm -hmm. but like, it, when it's loose like that, I always get nervous. I go, no, I don't know. Yeah, that back row at the store is uh, Mitzi's, what do they call it? Mitzi's uh, chair. Yeah. 
Like they're they're it's all good natured. Like, you know, Neil Brennan's up and he says something and you <laughs> yeah. shit on Neil and then he comes up, but then you say the same thing to him. Yeah. You know, because you respect him enough that you're just it's just like being the the, the guys in the in the balcony on the Muppets. You know, you're just <laughs> talking shit. And then you'll say the same thing to the person when they get off. So I was sitting with someone one time, you can guess who it is. And I was like, and, I, and they just leaned over and they're like, you up next? I said, yeah. And they go, you taking your shirt off? I go, yeah. And they went, ugh. <laughs> and got him and walked out. <laughs> oh, that's good. Dude, congratulations on the special. Uh, your kind words mean a lot to me and, uh, you know, I really appreciate you've always been very generous and very giving as but it's, a friend. It's selfish. It's I, selfish. I, I got to read Ayn Rand, Ayn Rand uh, yeah. because I didn't realize that the Fountainhead's all about selfishness. And I, I behave very selfishly is I like you because A, you've always been nice to me. Uh, even when no one was nice to me, you've always been nice to me. And B, I find you hysterical. To be around you is is such a treat because not only are you not, I mean, did, did you, were you telling me the, the, uh, the Hitler? Yeah. Can can we close on that? Sure. But hang on. But this is why I like you. And it's, it's selfish. Same reason I like Mike. It's selfish. Yeah. I like to be around things I like. Uh -huh. I don't cheat on my wife. Not because I care about her feelings. Mm -hmm. I don't cheat on her because I, I need her in my life. Yeah, yeah. And I know that if I do that, I don't <laughs> yeah, get her anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I operate on a selfish uh -huh. behavior. And and with you, I know I know how talented you are at stand up, and I know that you watched all my sets for that fucking week we were on the road, and I knew that you were honest with me about everything. You were mm -hmm. I just I know that's so hard to come by because so many people just would rather just be like, no, it's great, mm -hmm. you're doing great, man, mm -hmm. and you're better than I am. So I know that sometimes when you travel with younger comics, when you're better than them, you're like, do you have any notes? And they're like, that was fucking incredible, uh -huh. and you're like, god damn it, yeah, I need to be around someone better than me no, so I'm that they can go. You. You're absolutely yeah. better yeah. than me. And so for you to look at my set and go, I like that, then I go, okay, so that's something that he would like. So then I know that that's something I can do. Like when Atel says to me, dude, that joke, fucking hysterical. Yeah. Do you, here's what you need, three things. And I'm uh -huh. like, oh my God, if he's saying that, yeah, because I know he's better than me too. So dude, my special, I showed it, to, I only showed my special to like three <laughs> people. And he called me and he goes, cut the first three minutes. And I just called the editor. I said, cut the first three minutes. He goes, you're stiff. He goes, it's not the jokes aren't good. It's just that yeah. you didn't feel it. You weren't feeling it until a few minutes in. And I cut it out and it's the best thing I ever did. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, thanks for watching it. Of thanks course. for the support and all that stuff. And uh, can I plug a date? Yeah, plug a date. When, by when the way, there's a, there's a joke what kind of going to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah. When's so, this come out? Uh, I don't know. Next week. Next week? All right. So, Tulsa, Tacoma, San Francisco, Bunch of places. Go to fitzdog.com. I'm in um, September 27th and 28th. I'm at Resorts World Theaters. Oh. And then I'll be there. I, I, I don't think I'm going to be there. Do you want to say the city where that is? Uh, Las Vegas. No. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's, night, it's the 1960s and a guy walks into this like off the beaten path bar in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And he walks in and he looks down the bar and he sees a kind of a lonely figure in the shadows. It's a friendly guy. So he walks down the bar and he sits down next to me and he goes, uh, how you doing, pal? And he goes, good. And he goes, uh, can I buy you a drink? He says, yeah. And he looks at him and he goes, wait a minute. He goes, you look really familiar. I, I can't place, it's about your profile. Hitler? And he goes, yeah, it is me. He goes, what, hey, why are you sitting in a bar? You're Adolf Hitler. Why are you here? I am making the new plan. <laughs> The new plan is bigger than the old plan. It is better. This time, we kill 20 million Jews and four rodeo clowns. And he goes, why four rodeo clowns? You see, nobody cares about the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> you told that on the bus to us and I was crying, fucking laughing. <laughs> That's why I love you, Greg. Uh, That's thanks, why I buddy. love you. Love Just you fucking too. funny, man. Congrats on the special. Thanks, man. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.